Good day. So we are now on the topic, Law on Corporations, specifically General Provisions. So the corporation, it is an artificial being created by operation of law, having the right of succession in the powers, attributes, and properties expressly authorized by law or incident to its existence. So there you have it. You heard it right. It is created by operation of law. Okay. And it is an artificial being. So when we say artificial being, under the law kasi, there are two kinds of persons. Under the law, it could be natural persons and artificial persons. So a corporation falls under the second kind. So it is an artificial. So it has a personality separate and distinct from the stockholders or members and which commences upon the issuance of its certificate of incorporation. Now, it is also created by the operation of law. So, a corporation does not come into existence by mere agreement of the parties unlike the partnership. Persons desiring to form a private corporation must comply with the requirements of the law governing its creation. So, meron po siyang requirements that must be complied with the Securities and Exchange Commission. They have the right of succession also. A corporation, as a rule, continues to exist for the period for which it has been formed regardless of the changes in the ownership of its stocks or in its membership. So its existence is not affected by death, insolvency, or incapacity of the individual stockholders and members. It is because it has the right to transfer the power to his or her inherit uh, to his or her assignees. Okay, so that's the having the right of success, successions. It has also the powers, attributes, and properties expressly authorized by law or incident to its existence. Okay, so although it has the powers, it has also limitation to the powers of the corporation. So it is called doctrine of limited capacity. Under doctrine of limited capacity, a corporation can exercise only the powers expressly conferred upon it by law and its articles of incorporation. So those implied if from such powers expressly granted and those that are incident to its existence. So any act exercised outside of such powers are, which are unauthorized are considered ultra vires. So therefore, even though the corporation has all the powers but it is only limited to uh, the, the powers expressly given to the corporation. So, other than that, and outside of this, ano, of its incorporation rules and bylaws, it will be considered ultra vires. Okay, we have another theory here, the theories of formation of a corporation. Okay, we have concession theory. It is also known as government paternity theory or franchise theory. So, a corporation is an artificial creature without any existence until it has received the imprimatur of the state acting according to law through Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay, so it means that it don't have artificial nature until it has given a license to operate okay, according to law through the governing body Securities and Exchange Commission. And we have also this theory of corporate enterprise or economic unit, which states that the corporation is not merely an artificial being, but more of an aggregation of persons doing in business or an underlying business unit. Another doctrine of a corporation is doctrine of corporate entity. So doctrinally, a corporation is a legal or juridical person with a personality separate and apart from its individual stockholders or members and from any other legal entity to which it may be connected or related. So it is not, in fact, in, re in reality a person, kaya nga siya artificial being, di ba? But the law treats it as though it is where a person by process of fiction this facilitating the conduct of corporate business so the stockholders or members who as natural persons are merged in the corporate body compose the corporation but they are not the corporation but there you have it so they have separate distinct personality 
from its uh, board of directors or the stockholders. So the stockholders will be a group of persons, but they are not called the corporation. They are going to manage the corporation, and the corporation is in itself a separate and distinct corporate entity. Okay, this why it has uh, it has an artificial being nature. Okay, so another. So, we have test to determine the nationality of a corporation. First one is the incorporation test. So, under incorporation test, this is determined by the state of corporation regardless of the nationality of the stockholders. So, in here, the nationality of the corporation follows that of the country under whose laws it was incorporated. So, this is the test applied in our jurisdiction as can be determined from the definition of a foreign corporation. Another one is the control test. So, this is called wartime test. So, under this one, it is determined by the nationality of the controlling stockholders or members. So, this is used to determine nationality for investment purposes. This test is adopted under Foreign Investment Act. So, to give more of this control test, since the nationality of the corporation follows that of the stockholders owning the controlling interest, so this is applied during the wartime for the purpose of security of the state. Okay, accordingly, even if the corporation was formed under our jurisdiction, it shall be considered a foreign corporation if it is controlled by foreigners. So, if majority of the, corp uh, the corporators are foreigners, then it will become foreign corporation. Okay, but if ever na majority of the members or corporators are Filipino, okay, then it will be called domestic corporation or private corporation. Okay, so that's control test or wartime test. Another test to determine the nationality of a corporation is a grandfather rule. Under this rule, it is a method by which the percentage of Filipino equity in a corporation engage in nationalized and or partly nationalized areas or activities provided under the constitution and under nationalization laws is computed in cases where corporate shareholders are present or by attributing the nationality of the second or even subsequent tire of ownership to determine the nationality of the corporate shareholder. So, here, you, have, you heard it right. So, we are using the percentage of Filipino equity in corporations engaged in the nationalized and or partly nationalized areas of activities and that provided under the constitution and under nationality laws, it is accurately computed. Therefore, magkocompute po tayo sa grandfather rule. And the diminution of the said equity prevented. So, the presence of corporate stockholders with alien stockholder stockholding would as a result diminish effective control of Filipinos if this is not applied. So therefore, we have to follow it. Okay, so how do we apply grandfather rule? So the rule applies with respect to the registration of the subsidiary if the capital structure of both the parent and corporation and its subsidiary do not apply with the 60-40 okay, uh, Filipino to foreign ratio. So, therefore, ang isa sa mga suggested or percentage that will tell us na it, the nationality of the corporation is um, Filipino corporation or private or domestic corporation as to foreign corporation is dapat to be called it as a domestic corporation or private corporation here in the Philippines, dapat 60% of the stocks Okay, or majority or 60% of the stock will be owned by Filipinos, while 40% will be owned by foreigners. So, that's the um, application rule for the grandfather rule. So, therefore, if ever uh, the foreign stockholder percentage of um, investment will increase 
40% or more, then it will no longer called domestic or private corporation. So, it will be called foreign corporation now. It's because it exceeded its um, percentage rule under the grandfather rule. Let us now move on to the distinction of a corporation between a partnership. Now, a corporation is created by law or operation of the law, while the partnership okay, is created by mere agreement of the parties. So, that's the main difference of the two. So, since it is created by the law, yung corporation, so, sa partnership, it is mere agreement of the parties kasi it is consensual and it's made out of the, the contract. Okay? So, next is generally there must be at least five incorporators. Okay? To make it a corporation, there must be at least five incorporators or founders of the corporation. And for the partnership, it may be formed by two or more natural persons. So, at least two, you can now form a partnership. But in corporation, at least five. But we have new pronouncements from our provision of law that you can you can make uh, you can make a corporation at least uh, even though you are one. So that's corporation sole. Okay, so sole corporation at least only at least one person can make a corporation. Na. Okay, but with uh, guidelines and provisions, pa naman yan. Okay, next is it can exercise only such powers and function expressly granted to it by law. I said it a while ago. So, we, the corporation has so many powers, okay, given by the law, but they are only limited to uh, the corporation and how to process or function as a corporation. Other than that, it is now outside. If it's outside the powers, then it will be considered ultra vires. But ultra vires does not necessarily mean it is illegal. It is just outside or beyond the scope of the power of the corporation. Okay, while on the partnership, it can do anything by agreement of the parties. Yes, kasi nga diba, it's mere consensual. Therefore, any agreement, as long as it is consented by the partners, then there's no problem at all. Okay, provided that only that it is not contrary to law, morals, good customs, public policy, and public order. To continue, so in a corporation, unless validly delegated expressly or impliedly, must transact its business through the board of directors. So there can be no pronouncement, there can be no uh, approved decision if without the decision or approval of the board of directors. So say board of directors or the head of the corporation, they will, they have all the powers, okay, expressly given by the law to them, and they can really uh, approve or disapprove a matter regarding the operations of the corporation. While in the partnership, in the absence of agreement to the contrary, or kung walang manner of management was given to the partners as to who will manage, any one of the partners may validly bind the partnership na Okay, so unless na lang if it is outside or not usually or not in the ordinary course of the business. But if it's in the ordinary course of the business, even though eh, there's absence of agreement to the contrary, anyone may validly bind the partnership. Another, it has the right of succession, the corporation has the right of succession, which presupposes that it continues to exist despite the death withdrawal, incapacity, or civil interdiction of the stockholders or members. Therefore, it can be assigned to another person even though the stockholder will, uh, will experience death or the stockholder withdraws. Uh, the stockholder has incapacity and during the course of his um, term, in case of civil interdiction, so the corporation can still continue, okay? But in the partnership, it is based kasi on mutual trust and confidence such that the debt, incapacity, insolvency, and civil interdiction or mere withdrawal of one partner would result in it in dissolution. So, we already discussed this one. 
that in case of death incapacity in other uh, other circumstances that will change the relationship of the partners then it will be dissolved okay but when we say dissolve it's not merely it does not necessarily mean that it is liquidated na okay so after it was resolved then the partnership can still operate okay after the dissolution process okay next is corporation in the corporation any stockholder can ordinarily transfer sell or assign his shares so since it has the right of succession it has also the right to transfer the right to sell his shares or the right to assign the powers of his shares okay without the consent of the other stockholders okay yan so a partner cannot transfer in the partnership a partner cannot transfer his rights or interest in the partnership so as to make the transfer a partner without the consent so if meron siyang uh, magiging transfer of his rights or uh, contribution or capital contribution this will not be uh, pursued without the consent of the other partners since again partnership is a consensual contract okay next is corporation the term of existence is limited only to 50 years unless extended and the partnership may exist for an indefinite period so after the 50 years of the corporation it can still exist or operate if it is renewed okay but in the partnership okay if you are partnership at will you can you can stop the partnership anytime as long as you want to and the other partner or partners agreed into it okay but if you have if you are a partnership for a fixed period okay so you can uh, operate as up to the range of time that you've agreed okay, for a particular undertaking. If tatapos na, so that's the time na matatapos yung partnership, okay, or madi-dissolve. Pero if ever, after the expiration of the term, you want to pursue pa the partnership, then you are, no long, you are no longer a partnership for a fixed period, but a partnership at will, okay? So, and the last one, the corporation. The consent of the state is necessary for its dissolution. Yes, you heard it right. So, hindi basta-basta. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> that this whole view corporation, you must bear the consent or get the consent of the state. But here in partnership, the partners may dissolve it at will. Okay. So, as long as they want to, they can dissolve the partnership at will. Let us now move on to the classification of corporations. So let's start with as to whether the sh shares of stock are issued or not or as to stock. So when we are going to classify the corporation as to its stock, we have stock corporation and non-stock corporation. To cut it short, stock corporation are those which have capital stocks divided into shares and are authorized to distribute to the holders such as shares, dividends, or allotments of the surplus profits based on the shares held. Okay, so that stock corporation is a corporation that issues stocks. Okay, to be subscribed by the sub, uh, the subscribers. So if they subscribe, the subscriber will become stockholder. Okay, as pay, uh, upon full payment. Next is non-stock. It, it is the complete opposite of stock corporation. Uh, non-stock are corporations wherein no part of their income is distributable as dividends to its members, trustees, or officers subject to the provisions on the solution okay so again there's no part of the dividends will be distributable uh, as dividends or part of their income distributable as dividends so there's no part of their income so that's non-stock okay another one is as to organizers it could be public corporation or private so if it is public it is by state only and private, it is uh, formed by private persons alone or with the state. Okay? Next is as to purpose. So, as to purpose, we are going to categorize corporation as to public, private, government-owned and controlled, and quasi-public. 
So when you say public, a corporation is organized for the government of a portion of a state for the purpose of serving general good and welfare. So it is organized by the government. But when you say private, it is the complete opposite of public corporation that is formed for some private purpose, benefit, aim, or end. They may be stock or non-stock corporations. Okay, we have also government-owned and controlled corporation or GOCC. So, it is also created by the government of which the government is the major or the majority stockholder. Example, GSIS and National Power Corporation. Okay, so tatandaan natin basta mga GOCCs, majority stockholders natin is the government. Okay. Ayan. Kaya nga siya GOCCs or government owned and controlled. And the last is quasi-public. So, it is a private corporation which have accepted from the state the grant of a franchise or contract involving the performance of public duties. Okay? Another category is as to legal right to corporate existence. We are going to categorize it as to de jure, de facto or corporations by S to L. So, when we say dihure, a corporation is organized in strict or substantial conformity with requirements of law and cannot be successfully attacked or questions or questioned by any party even in a direct proceeding for that purpose by the state. So, therefore, dihure ka if you comply all the requirements. Okay? So, of the law and cannot be successfully attacked or questioned. Okay? So, while de facto, a corporation organized with a colorable compliance with the requirements of a valid law and its existence cannot be inquired collaterally but such injury may be made by the Solicitor General in a co-warranto proceeding. Okay? Ayun. <coughs> So, for a de facto corporation to exist, the following conditions must be present. So, there must be a valid law, as I said a while ago, under which is it is incorporated. There must be a temp in good faith to incorporate. There must be an actual exercise of corporate powers. And a certificate of incorporation is issued despite a defect on its corporation. So, some of the defects that will result in the creation of the de facto corporation are, okay, uh, when majority of the incorporators are not residents of the Philippines. So therefore, even though you complied with the requirements but meron siyang defect as to the nature of the corporation, for example, sinabi ko, majority of the incorporation incorporators or yung mga founders ng corporation are not residents. So therefore, even though they, val they have valid law and they attempt to comply with in good faith, but the formation of the corporators is not suggested kasi they are forming a domestic corporation but the citizenship or the nationality test proves that marami ang foreigners kaysa sa Filipinos. So, you could be a de facto corporation. Another, when the name of the corporation is similar to that an existing corporation, so under the law kasi, uh, the name of the corporation or the corporate name must not be confusingly similar to other corporation names. So, if that would be the case, you could be a de facto corporation. Or when the acknowledgement is defective. However, the following will preclude even the existence of a de facto corporation. So, absence of incorporation and failure to file articles of incorporation. So, that is de facto corporation. But, if you complied all of the requirements, then you are a dihuri corporation. So, we have another corporation by Estupel. So, a group of person which holds itself out as a corporation and enters into a contract with a third person on the strength of such appearance cannot be permitted to deny its existence in an action under the said contract. So, ito, one, it is one in which in reality not a corporation, but considered as one, it's because ayun, they are precluded by their admission or conduct from denying its existence. So, in 
corporation by Estopel, okay, so they have liabilities, okay, so the liability of the persons assuming to act as a corporation and those dealing with it, so this is under section 20 na, 21 of the Batas Bilang Pambansa 69 of the corporation or the corporation code, so all persons who assume to act as a corporation knowing it to be without authority to do so shall be liable as general partners so we have background naman for the general partnership as to estopel also so eto corporation lang but they are the liability is same with the general partners for all the debts liabilities and damages incurred arising as as a result thereof when any such ostensible corporation is sued on any transactions entered by it as a corporation or on tort committed by it as such, it shall not be allowed to use as a defense its lack of corporate personality because you are uh, defrauding the third parties because of your nature. Okay? Pinalabas mo na corporation, yung company niya where in fact wala naman talagang na form na corporation, then you will be liable for all the damage has caused into it. Okay, and any person who assumes an obligation to an ostensible corporation such as cannot resist performance thereof on the ground that there was in fact no corporation. So, wala kang takas. If you consented to it and if you are part of it, then you will be liable. So, that's uh, the classification of partnership according to corporate existence. So, another one is as to loss of incorporation. So we have domestic and foreign. So it's a corporation formed, organized, or existing under Philippine laws, while the foreign is formed and organized or existing under any laws other than those of the Philippines and whose laws allow Filipino citizens and corporations to do business in its own country or state. Next is as to whether they are open to the public or not. So it is closed corporation when those shares of stocks are held by limited number of person. Usually, closed corporation has a member of 20 person and most of them are families. So you can form a closed corporation there. And we have also open those form to openly accept outsiders as stockholders or investors. So it is open to public. Anyone can subscribe shares become an investor and become a stockholder to the company okay next is as to relationship of management and control so when we say holding so these are corporation that confine their activities to owning stock in and supervising management of other companies when we say subsidiary okay subsidiary they're those which another corporation own at least a majority of the shares and thus have control while the affiliates it is those corporation which are the subject to common control and operated as part of this system okay so therefore the holding corporation is a parent corporation and then the subsidiary is the baby corporation okay or the subsidiary okay so the subsidiary is when the parent corporation uh, purchases most or majority of the shares of that certain company. So, if a corporation purchased shares, mostly of the shares of the other company, then that company purchase, uh, whose purchase was being sold by the holding corporation will become its subsidiary. Okay? So... As to number of persons who compose them, so we have aggregate and sole. Okay, when we say aggregate, those composed of more than one person or member, while sole is those that consist of one person or individually only and who are made of bodies, corporate and politic in order to give them legal capacity and advantage which as natural persons they cannot have. So, as to purposes, we could um, categorize it as to ecclesiastical, lay, eleemosynary, and civil. When we say ecclesiastical, okay, corporations composing entirely spiritual person like bishops, 
deacons and the like so and are established for the furtherance of religion so ecclesiastical yan okay lahat ng churches there are ecclesiastical corporation next is lay which all corporation other than ecclesiastical okay other than religious groups they are cor called lay corporation when we say illusionary they are established for or devoted to charitable purposes or those supported by charity and the last one is civil this is established for business or profit separate juridical personality so general rule a corporation has a separate personality distinct from its stockholders and members so the exemption here is the court will not hesitate to disregard the corporate veil when it is misused or when necessary in the interest of justice so here, the concept of corporate entity was not meant to promote unfair objectives. So yeah, yes, you heard it right. Even though the corporation has a separate personality, doesn't mean that it can do all what it wanted okay, uh, through the stockholder's decision. So it will not promote or the state will not promote unfair objectives of the corporation. Therefore, even though they are distinct, the corporation is distinct and has a personality uh, separate from the stockholders and between the state. So, if they are promoting unfair objectives okay, and an anomalies inside the corporation, then the state will interfere. So, to continue, the doctrine of piercing the veil of corporate entity states that the doctrine that a corporation is a legal entity or person and law distinct from the persons composing it or any other corporation to which it may be related is merely a legal fiction for purposes of convenience and to observe the ends of justice. So this fiction therefore cannot be extended to a point beyond its reason and policy. So peculiar situations or valid grounds may exist to warrant the disregard of its independent being and the piercing of the corporate veil. Therefore, even though the corporation is separate and distinct from the state, but because of promoting their unfair objectives, fraud uh, anomalies, so therefore the state may interfere. So what are the areas or where doctrine of the person in the veil corporate entity may be applied when there is fraud cases? When they continue to promote their unfair objectives, which is um, illegal, so the veil of the separate corporate personality may be lifted when such personality is used to defeat public convenience, justify wrong, protect fraud, or defend crime, or use as a shield to confuse legitimate issues. So there you have it, the general provisions of the corporation, law on corporation.